So we have our two triangles made up of five vertices. We discussed how we created this data and how we sent it down to OpenGL and how we told OpenGL what this data meant by using the vertex to trib pointer. We also told OpenGL how the vertices are connected using these indices, so we've come a long way. However, our triangles are not showing up red. The second attribute, or thinking zero-based, it's the one-th attribute, one attribute determines the color and so here's red and here's red and here's red and these should both be red but there's no red and that is because OpenGL assumes nothing about our data. The only thing OpenGL assumes is that the zeroth attribute determines the position. So here's the zeroth attribute. It's a position. Here's the position we've talked about in previous videos. Here's all the positional data but I want these triangles to show up in the colors that I send down and this color is red but no red. How are we going to fix that? We need to do that using shaders. Shaders are programs that we write that execute on the graphics card. The code that you're seeing here runs on the central processing unit on my computer and so we need to break away from the CPU and actually go to the graphics card. If you think you buy this great graphics card that can do excellent graphics, well hopefully your programmer that wrote whatever game wrote excellent shaders to do that. So I'm going to give you the whirlwind high-level tour of how shaders work and uh, we'll go from there. So this data that we send down to OpenGL, in fact let me block it out one more time. Each one of these blocks represents a vertex. Each one of these vertices goes into a factory, if you would, or it's called the graphics pipeline. If we send our data into the graphics pipeline, it crunches away, and then hopefully out comes a shape or a color, so on and so forth. Well, it's up to us to customize this pipeline. If you go Google fixed function pipeline, that's how it's been done forever. There was just this pipeline and OpenGL managed it all for you and then eventually programmers thought, you know, I really want to customize this pipeline. I want to get in there and do some custom step. Hence, shaders were born. The term shader actually, I already said it's a program that runs on the graphics card. Uh, its responsibility is to shade a pixel. Hopefully you understand what pixels are, but essentially in this triangle there's there's zillions of little pixels. In fact, I'll try to cover one here. I'll color one. Looks like I colored about four or five if I get my head really close to the monitor. But there's a pixel and another pixel and another pixel. And so if I color all these dots different colors, that's how we get things to show up on the screen. The term pixel is short for picture element. Anyway, we need to customize that pipeline, and we do that by writing shaders. There's two types of shaders we have to write. There's several types of shaders, but the two types we'll focus on for a long time are vertex, vertex shaders, and fragment, fragment shaders. And for now, you can think of fragments being a pixel, even though that is not perfectly correct. For now, just think of fragments as shaders, and I'll clear that mud up later. So part of the pipeline here, well actually we're going to customize the two largest pieces of that pipeline. So what happens when we send our data down to OpenGL is when we say draw, OpenGL will take each vertex, send it to the vertex shader one by one. The vertex shader can do whatever it wants with this data, it doesn't really matter. But the vertex shader has to output two things. One is the position on the screen, and in our case, we're not going to do anything with the position. We're just going to take the position in as is and send it out, but we'll quickly customize that later. But the, let me just write that here for now. The vertex shader has to output position, and then it can output uh, anything else, okay? Any other data it wishes to. It's totally up to us what that data means or what it does is totally custom data. So I'm going to say custom data. Once OpenGL has the position, okay, in this case, let's go stick with red a little bit. Uh, in this case, we're just going to send the position out that we get in, but we certainly don't have to. Once OpenGL has that position, it knows that these three verts make up one triangle and so if OpenGL wishes to draw this triangle, it has to fill every single pixel inside that triangle. And the way that OpenGL does that 
is for every single pixel or fragment, as I'll call it for now, uh, again, that's not a perfectly true term, but, but for every fragment in here, OpenGL has to execute the fragment shader. So in the case of the vertex shader, the amount of times it's going to run is one, two, three, four, five. But the fragment shader is going to run several more times than the pixel shader, depending on, or than the vertex shader, depending on how many fragments the triangle covers. So, so the position is open for OpenGL. This custom data actually comes back in to the fragment shader. In OpenGL, or when I say OpenGL, in this case it's, it's the hardware, the graphics card, it interpolates that data from vertex to vertex. What does that mean for interpolation? Well, the high-level view is, say this vertex was actually blue, and these two were red, then a lot of this would be blue, but eventually it would blend in and make more red. It would do a lot better than what I'm drawing here, but that's the idea. That's interpolation. Believe me, we will visit that immensely. But for now, just think of what the vertex shader outputs. It's interpolated and sent back into the fragment shader. We need to write a fragment shader. Again, it's a program that runs on the CPU. And then the only thing the fragment shader has to output is an RGB color. RGB color. That stands for red, green, blue. Using these three colors, we know what, how much of red and green to blue to apply to the one little pixel, but we're going to run the fragment shader for every single pixel. So that's, that's the high-level whirlwind tour of the graphics processing pipeline. Believe me, we are going to see this several times and examine it in depth. But for now, that's what we need to do. We need to write a vertex shader. We need to write a fragment shader. We need to get OpenGL to use those and install those onto the graphics card and use those, and then we'll see that our triangles will show up red or blue or whatever color we respect here as we send down for the vertex color. Now, one little note before I leave this video. Graphics processors are super powerful because they do a lot of things in parallel. That means they have several little CPUs on there that are built to do floating point arithmetic or vector math. As we'll, we'll do a lot of vector math throughout this playlist, but graphics cards are are great at that and they can do it in parallel. So it's not that each one of these vertices gets sent down to the graphics card or runs through the graphics processor uh, one at a time. Instead, what graphics cards have are several processors that are excellent at doing this. So all of this will happen in parallel as much as possible, and that's why graphics cards can do graphics so fast. Is One, not only do they have extremely fast processors, but two, they have several of them. And so using that power to the advantage, you can see down here several pixels to cover, but if the graphics card can do that in parallel, then then that's pretty powerful. Anyway, next video, vertex shader, fragment shader, let's install it, let's do some awesome stuff.